Oh, that's the fun part, picking up like 10 D6. And... I don't have 10 D6, so I would no. have to roll a bunch of times. <laughs> oh no, I have to roll so many dice. My life's so hard. might become relevant shortly, but uh, Laya, because you are within 10 feet of me, you get plus 3 on all saving throws. I knew there was a reason I came over by you. Mm. Other than, you know, that I'm a squishy little rogue and need your heels. Yeah, it's about to start getting cool, dude. <laughs> um, so Roland, you take two attacks uh, from this priest's mace. Um, one of them kind of like just brushes over, and the second one you can feel she kind of catches you uh, on the shoulder um, as she's coming down with it. Or sorry, he's coming down with it. He catches you on the shoulder, and you can feel um, the 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 impact force from it. But you also feel this energy kind of like shock into you um, as it seeps a little bit deeper, and you take uh, fourteen damage. Ooh. Uh, and then, Laya, you are up. All right. Um, I'm gonna go after... It was eight that just stabbed me. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go after him with my rapier. Fifteen to hit. Uh, that does not hit. Super cool. Um, then I'm gonna uh, use my bonus action um, to launch one of the thorns at him, I guess. Okay. That's just another attack roll with Blackthorn, right? Correct. 22 to hit. That hits. Do I get sneak attack with the thorn? Or does it have you, to be? You can only get sneak attack once per turn. So if you've already used it, then you're done. But, but you also, you have to either have someone within five feet or have advantage. Who are you hitting okay. with it? Uh, number eight. Number eight's within five feet of you, isn't it? Or no, okay, sorry, yeah, no, of course, that's dumb. It is within five feet of her, yes. <laughs> but that's not that's how she can attack him. <laughs> I was my my brain kind of went like, but Lia's fight within five feet of Warrior Eight. I I almost said that out loud, and then I was like, no, <laughs> um, no, I'll let my you know idiot what? friend say it. <laughs> then actually, I'm gonna like, so I'm gonna swing at eight, and obviously that misses, and then I'm gonna like do a quick turn and launch the thorn at seven. Okay, then you will get your sneak attack damage. Yes. Okay, so that's six before sneak attack. The sneak attack I'm just gonna roll in roll twenty or in beyond because I'm not rolling all those. Oh, but that's the fun part, picking up like ten D six and I don't have ten D six, so I would no. have to roll a bunch of times. <laughs> oh no, I have to roll so many dice. My life's so hard. So that's another fifteen damage. So uh, uh what did I say? Yes. Well, yeah. Um so you wait no that's 21 it was it was six you're good sorry they said nine um, Apparently my brain flipped it you slash it at number eight and you kind of catch him with the rapier as it's like slides across his, his armor um you spin around and you launch a thorn at number seven you see it kind of connect with uh, with its skin and uh you can see the thorn dig in in this rot starts to kind of spread out uh, on his neck as his it kind of like crawls up his face and he just like starts to, to bleed and from his eyes and just falls over dead. Wow. <laughs> Roland goes, holy shit. And even even I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. Let's say, all right, everyone, let's slow down, everybody. Oh my god. I think I just like violated the Geneva Convention. <laughs> I have to write the king about this. I've got good news. There is no Geneva Convention within this the confines of this universe are safe. Well that's good. <laughs> that's not good. That's... It's good right now in this particular second. 
<laughs> um, it's good for me. Now I can war crimes. <laughs> now I can yeah. war crimes. The good thing, no, because there's no convention, <laughs> technically, they're not war crimes. It's, it's just war. Just remember, It's kids. just crimes. <laughs> it's, it's, just remember, kids. It's just things happening. It's not a war crime if it's the first time. Um, so, <laughs> That's uh, why they call them warning. <laughs> uh, it is the adept's turn. They take four shots. They all miss. They are horrendous, and I hate them. <laughs> um, what a bunch like, of wieners. Yeah. Adept to getting their asses kicked. I bet oh. he's so glad he brought them along. Jeez. Uh, Orlo, it is your go. Would you say, Mr. DM, that we are in dim light or darkness? Uh, it is most certainly dim light, yes. Hmm. Interesting. Goodbye, Orlo. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to uh, get away from these warriors by shadow stepping and teleporting to where that adept is. Um, so I'm just going to like, bloop, hello. <laughs> the, the two warriors are there, like, kind of like in the melee with you and you just disappear in front of them and they like both swing and then look at each other and then look at like where you were and are very confused. Yeah. Like I, I kind of look at my leg um, where that last one slashed me um, and kind of just like dig in and shadow step over as that happens and uh, end up taking a swing at the, uh, at that there adept. Go ahead and make your. Attacks. Is he still prone or no? He was he was he was shooting. So he's uh, I right? actually I did not make him stand up. So he is prone. Oh, what a little bitch, dude! Because I actually <laughs> forgot he was prone. So and he can shoot from the ground. So there's no reason to stand oh, up. Oh, that's a nat twenty. So get him, ladies get and gentlemen. Fucked on nerd. Uh, Watch me roll one damage. It's gonna be I, so sick. Can I get an F in the chat for this? Poor dumb motherfucker who was like, "I'll just lay down. Nobody will see me." Oh my god! I'm gonna hide. In, I'm gonna hide in these little thorns. That's that's max damage. Eleven damage to the adept. Hell yeah! Didn't you say it was? An yeah. Eight? Uh, it was a D eight. I rolled. Which? Oh, did nope. you did max you roll an eight on the D eight? Yeah. So that's double it, to sixteen, plus your uh, modifier. Plus. Yay, 10. crits. So 19. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I crit. That's right. Huh. Not 20. That's what happens when you crit. It is. <laughs> it is. So 19 damage, yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he looks real fucking bad. <laughs> okay. Cool. And then well, I just. He's already smirk getting at him. his ass beat. You don't have to call him ugly, too. <laughs> and, and Orlo just kind of smirks at him and uh, Flurry of Blows. <laughs> Well, you have another down attack. Notice too. his Jordans are fake. Oh no, I do have two attacks. Yeah, dude, fuck that. You're done, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with advantage, also because he is still prone. Yeah. So let's see if we can make something happen here. Uh, tw twenty-five to hit. That'll do. Okay. Um, what? Don't betray me. Oh, another eight. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's 11, I guess, that time. Now it's 11, yes. <laughs> um, and you only have a plus three to your dex? Uh, wait, wait, what? What are you talking your, about? Your damage is based on your dex modifier, right? Um, what? No. What is your dexterity score? 15 total, plus two. Uh... 17 i mean my damage as shown here is just when i two hand bone breaker is 1d8 plus three yeah because he's got a plus two to dex yes yeah, so that's right um so yeah he uh he will definitely be passing away at this moment uh, how would you say that orlo beats this man into the floor with bone breaker <laughs> yeah so that first hit you know the the crit he just really came down hard right on the top of his head as he as he does so the dude kind of like buckles over and is leaning forward and bone breaker is you know after that swing underneath him so brings bone breaker right up and kind of uppercuts his the front of his like the just the front of his face with the end of bone breaker sending him flying backwards um 
onto his back. You see him fly, fly backwards and hit the wall, just like kind of slide down it a little bit. Um, <laughs> Sir Roland, it is your go. Oh, sorry, Orlo, is there anything else you wanted to do? Yeah, so after that, uh, Orlo just kind of looks back over his shoulder at the two warriors to see like if they're still looking for me or if they're looking at me now. Um, they've both heard the sickening crunch of this man getting absolutely decimated and have turned around to, to catch you just slumping him into the corner and are both horrified. And, and Orlo just kind of looks at them and gives them a your next kind of look. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, give me an intimidation roll. Uh, oh, sweet. I'm real, I'm real good at that. It's a scary elephant man, dude. Oh, that's, a, that's an eight. <laughs> I'm super intimidating, guys. Okay. They both kind of like, glares at them. They laugh. They both kind of like return the look to you and they're like, okay. Like you, right. you try and give them the I'm watching you, but your eyes are like bloodshot. You're clearly just <laughs> baked out of your mind and they're like, this. <laughs> I go to do that and just poke myself in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Let's see, am I within, uh, like, if I move behind this priest in between the priest and the well, um, A, is there enough space for me to do that? And B, will I incur an attack of opportunity for Warrior 8? Uh, there is enough space, and no, you will not. Uh, in that case, I'm definitely doing that shit. <laughs> Roland dips his butt in the wellspring. And... Yeah. <laughs> Roland takes a big gulp of the magic water. Um, you know, he doesn't do that yet. I think um, he should. I think, dude, what if Roland went Super Saiyan right now? Like, he takes his armor thing? off and it's like... <laughs> just fucking Broly. What if, what, I've only what been if he, using 30% of my true strength. But what if he dips his sword in it? That'd be kind of sick. That'd probably be cool. But we'll see. <laughs> But we'll see what happens. Put your sword I mean, in it. You just fucking put your sword in it. Um, the first thing Roland's going to do is uh, swing his magic sword at this priest again. Go for it. With advantage, because we're flanking, right? We're flanking, uh, plus flanking. two. Plus I two. usually do a plus two. Roll. Plus two. All right. Because advantage do be real strong in D&D 5th edition. Um, it's a so 31, it's a 31 to hit. That'll certainly do it, sir. Okay, and he's going to hit and cast, um, Divine Smite at second level, uh, giving him plus 3d8 radiant damage in addition to his d8 plus 6 regular ouchy sharp sword damage. <laughs> All right. Um, that's max damage on the regular ouchy damage. Uh, so it's going to be um, 14 normal damage and 16 radiant damage for 30. Uh... 30 damage against this priest. Uh, how would you like to execute this poor, poor man that you've just laid Yeah, this poor dude on? who never did anything to anybody. He's never done anything bad just, in his life. He was just doing a little henching to put himself through college. He's a man of Jesus. Uh, um, a monotheist, certainly. I think... I feel like uh, Sir Roland gets, like, a buff every time he kills a monotheist. <laughs> like, he keeps track of it. Like, he's got a, a notch on his belt that he fucking puts on every <laughs> Oh, that's not what the notches on the belt are for. Yeah, that's... Those are different notches. Um, so Roland, uh, he, like, gets hit in the shoulder by this guy's mace. Um, this priest thinks he's slick doing his own divine smite. Um, Roland uh, kind of has his shield arm and he, he traps the dude's mace 
uh, like on on his shoulder, and then with his free hand, he stabs up. I'm assuming this guy's wearing like a breastplate or something. He stabs like up in the this dude's uh, armpit and like flips around so his back is to the uh, fountain, and then he lops the guy's head off. Um, oh, also, what I was going to do. Um, he gives him a swirly will, in the wellspring, he, and then he gives he picks up his severed head and gives it a swirly in the wellspring. Um, if you will allow me to do this retroactively, um, one of the uh, abilities that my sword has that you gave me is that uh, whenever I hit with an attack, I can give one d8 temporary hit points to myself and anyone within 10 feet. Yes. Um, and temporary hit points, you only get, like, one, right? So it's not like I they can't do it twice and give us 2d8. They don't stack, but you can either, like, so for example, if you were to do it again, yeah, you can it, take either the a higher roll or choose to just take keep the one that you have, but it, it replaces or goes away. Okay, um, I will do that once for myself and for Laya. And we both get a temporary hit point. <laughs> hey, man, that could be the difference it. between life and death. Yeah, that's true. Um, one temporary hit point, and is that... Sorry, I'm trying to see if that's a bonus action. No. No, um, yeah, just is a, it's a thing that is a part of your sword, so you're fine. Just, just a thing that I can do. Okay, um, so now for my bonus action... I am going to target uh, warrior number eight with the resounding strike. He does the same thing. He bashes the pommel of his sword against the uh, the um, shield, and there's this belt on this boom. And do uh, I need it, to roll some sort of save for that since I'm in between the two of you? No, it's uh, it's targeted. It's something. Yeah, it's targeted. Um, and he fails his save for that. All right, he takes six force damage. So, um, oh, go ahead. Sir Roland watches Lya shoot a, a thorn out of her sword, or her rapier, um, turns around, makes a comment about that being aggressive, lops a man's head off, then turns around, smacks his pommel off the shield, and literally watches a man bleed out of his ears to death uh, directly in front of you. <laughs> well, the record, like... Lyle, that was a compliment. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, like, when I see this guy just start bleeding out of his ears and fall over, I'm just going to be like, cool. Um, and if you will allow me, we don't have free actions in this. In this, there are. Yeah. Well, yeah that okay. Means, yeah. Would I be able to uh, dip Truth Seeker's blade into the fountain behind me? Yes, absolutely. Just as a little, just as a little fun experiment to see what happens when I dip my magical sword into the into the magic. I did find it odd that in Baldur's Gate three there was a specific command for dipping. <laughs> Um, this is why. Priest, uh, Roland, Warriors. Warriors go. He, Warrior 4 is real, real fucked up about these spider webs, man. He's really not <laughs> having a great time about it. Warlow's killing people. <laughs> and oh, this, this is my chill buddy Orlo. He's like real laid back. Cut to Orlo just smashing a man's head with a paper. <laughs> Orlo has some trauma he's working through, okay? He's... <laughs> yeah, it's okay for Orlo, but it's not okay for the pal the super aggressive paladin. Orlo didn't say anything about Roland. Sam said things about Orlo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> I, I would like you guys to know that I just rolled six separate attacks, and not a single one of those rolls was above a three. Wow. Uh, Emmerin, we're just great. Go. 
Yeah, I Where's have a, one I have a support. Now? Yeah, I have but, a support uh, group I can refer uh, you to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we still got quite a few to off, so I'll uh, I'll set myself up for some success later, and uh, I'll do my um, crimson right again. Emerald's body's just kind of crackling with all this energy again. I have to roll my hemocraft die. I take six damage. Oh no. Oh no. Don't say oh no. Say oh, oh. yay. I oh no. Oh no. This is not good. Uh, cool. I, hold on, I need, I need to check something. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Emerin begins uh, reviewing the terms of his life insurance policy. <laughs> okay. No, He's I'm like okay. changing his beneficiaries. So with this, you can kind of see he's starting to bleed a little bit and he's starting to breathe a little bit heavier, but he's okay for now. And he'll reach out and take two slashes at uh, Chummy, Chummy here, Chummy Buddy. Uh, where are all my fucking attacks? There they fucking are. So twenty-two and a twenty-three to hit. Both will hit. So that's gonna be seventeen plus six is twenty-three damage. Uh, that will kill him. Excellent. So also bring he's him to sixty-nine total damage. Just for reference. Nice. So, yeah, this guy comes down, he slashes at Emerin. Emerin drops the bow, unbuckles the armor, pops in, takes three fucking four slashes at this guy and just rips his guts apart. But he's breathing a little heavy now. He'll run up to warrior three. Uh, how do I move a guy? Token. And I go bang to warrior three. And he's going to scream out to roll and he's like, Rolly, I'm not doing so good. And you guys are going to be able to see that his eyes are kind of like flashing back and forth between this, like his normal, like red color and this weird yellow color. That's it. That's his turn. It's like when you, uh, when you like almost have a boss defeated in an old, uh, NES game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That kind of thing. Flashing a little bit. Yeah. But it's just Uh, his eyes. Laya, it's your go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like, shout to the room um and uh are you sure you want to keep doing this he's all he's already dead can't be more dead uh go ahead and give me an intimidation check would that not be persuasion with my persuasive logical argument my persuasive persuasion no that's worth a try (laughs) I'm not very intimidating, though, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> They're either going to stab you to death, or... <laughs> that's a, um... That's an eight. Did I convince them? I want you to know... I, I rolled for everybody separately, and I want you to understand that the one person that is going to run away is the one person... <laughs> That cannot move as of right now. <laughs> He's like, yeah, whatever you want. I just, I don't care. <laughs> it's just fucking like completely tangled up in these webs. Like, I feel like by this point, he's just fallen into them like even more and just keeps like rolling around, getting himself more and more stuck. <laughs> I'm glad the Church of the Eternal Rain has a bunch of professionals they hired. <laughs> um... The adepts are gonna go. Let's see if they actually do fucking well, anything. Does that count as my whole turn? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. Go ahead. Um, you can attack if you'd like. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna run up to Warrior Three, uh, and take a stabby stabby with my rapier. Plus two to hit. It's gonna be a twenty-three. That will hit. And I get sneak attack, right? You sure do. So that's gonna be twenty-four damage. Nicely done. Um, he he doesn't look very good after that. Um, you get a couple really good shots and drive it deep, Gaby. Um, and you can see like he's he's definitely feeling not good. Um, 
adept go. The only person that I even remotely rolled well on was the one person that I can't fucking hit. Uh, and then, <laughs> and, uh, Orlo, it's your go. Uh, would you say adept four is within 60 feet of me? I, I think he is. Ah, uh, yes. He is 40, 44 feet away from you. Shadow step. Hey, buddy. <laughs> How's <laughs> it going? Th those warriors are going to be real fucking weirded out. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of look at them and once again, just like kind of make it seem like I'm getting ready to attack them and then just like pull back and then bloop and show up next to the adept and then just swing at them. Who had no idea that you were even... <laughs> Like, no perception that you were even close to him uh, because you weren't. So he just panics and, like, draws back a little bit. And that is a 23 to hit. That will hit. Uh, if you want to roll, you can either roll your second attack to hit or um, if you want to just do them separately, that's fine, too. I am. You're gonna make me. I'm never doing that again. That was a ten <laughs> hit. <laughs> Does not hit. No. That's a, that's on me. That's a, that's my bad. <laughs> you're casting. You're 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 sending me your dice mojo, and I don't like it. Take it back. <laughs> so we, 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 uh, we, we, five, five damage. Okay, five damage. I think that's all I can do unless I move. I don't really wanna. Uh, yeah, we'll stop there. Okay. Um, it's the warriors go. I just I need to see if this motherfucker actually can get out of this. Nope, he sure doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Web has like done fucking work for us in this game, man. It it's really has. Good. Um, so at this juncture, you guys really aren't uh, in any threat of dying uh, in just for Oh, they sake. might be. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Emeryn. Actually, give me uh, go ahead and give me one more set of rolls on that because I I know what you're you're rolling for. Let's play it out. We good. Okay. Um, All right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You're good. Um, for brevity's sake, I, like I said, I, I, there's not much that you guys are in, in any danger of at this point. You guys took care of the major threats. Um, if there's anything in particular you want to do, um, we can just wrap this up. Uh, we can take a quick little break and then move into the next uh, phase of this, if you all would like. I mean, Orlo's still seeing red, so unless they're giving up, Orlo's trying to kill everybody. <laughs> Emeryn will join him in that. Um, you guys will most certainly be able to kill all of them. That is not the question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm asking, are they trying to get away or are they going to stand and fight? Are no, they no, killing they, them all or are they? Yeah, if, if for, just for purposes of wrapping them up. Um, right. Other than right. number four, who will be perpetually webbed forever, <laughs> um, you will absolutely kill all of them in this, this okay. instance. Hold up. Hear Emeryn out. If you just give me one fucking second with one of them, and we let them go, yeah, I we're gonna let four like, go. We're gonna, <laughs> all right, that's, that's fair. You just let me punch him in the face just once, and we let him go. We should keep Warrior Four in the web while we perform the ritual, and then send him back <laughs> to tell <laughs> to tell Worm Lady what he's seen. I like I, it, but I, but hear me out because um, I got a new thing in my last um, my last level uh, brand of castigation castigation. And uh, when you damage a creature with a weapon for which you have an active crimson right, you can channel magic into the arcane brand and brand that creature with arcane magic. Uh, you always know the direction to the branded creature as long as it's on the same plane. Further, each time the branded creature deals damage to you or a creature within five feet, the branded creature takes psychic damage equal to your hemocraft modifier. Your brand lasts until you dismiss it uh, or it's dispelled. So effectively, if he takes off, 
I can tell you exactly where he fucking is. I was going to say uh, we keep him as a prisoner and we ransom him back to the uh, to the church. Well, we- Broly, that's the beautiful thing about what I can do. Uh, we can do both. I love it. That's a little. That's not a little not divine, though, wouldn't you say? All's fair in love and war. Am I? Well, I'm not going to argue. And taking advantage <laughs> of monotheists. Well. Um, so then, again, for the sake of brevity, you guys will be able to do all of these things. Um, all of them will die, except for number four, who is, again, perpetually trapped in Roeb and only will be freed once you do after the Brain of Castigation. Um, Thank you.